Welcome to the Chaos Sector. We return to the Matrix. A hit dog hollers every time as the saying goes. In other words, Kamala Harris is feeling the pressure. The pressure of letting her supporters down. And more importantly for her, letting the Democratic Party down. But why feel pressure if you are leading in the polls? Well, the pressure is coming from guilt if you want to be honest. Guilt of not being qualified for her position. In a recent report, the Harris campaign accepted a proposed CNN debate for October 23rd. But apparently Trump is not willing to accept. Quote, Harris campaign accepts October 23rd CNN debate, but Trump calls date too late. Vice President Kamala Harris has accepted CNN's invitation for an October 23rd presidential debate with her campaign calling on former President Donald Trump to do the same. Quote, Donald Trump should have no problem agreeing to this debate. Harris campaign chair Jen O'Malley Dillon said Saturday in a statement. It is the same format and setup as the CNN debate he attended and said he won in June when he praised CNN's moderators, rules, and ratings, unquote. Before we continue with more, here's the problem with this statement by Jen O'Malley. First of all, CNN already hosted the first presidential debate between Trump and old Joe. Stop being greedy. There are other networks that deserve an opportunity to host if there were another debate. Fox News can't get the debate because the Harris campaign doesn't want her to face questions from conservative moderators. ABC hosted the last debate between Harris and Trump. CNN doesn't deserve another debate. That's only fair. Second, just because you claim that Trump complimented the network and the moderators doesn't mean there should be another debate, nor should it be on CNN. The Harris campaign is trying their best to keep her in the safety of her backyard, running away from the right-wing media's challenge of Fox News. Let's continue, though. Trump, who debated Harris on September 10th, has said several times that he is not interested in another debate. Trump said Saturday that he would not agree to a rematch with Harris, saying an October debate would be too late. Quote, The problem with another debate is that it's just too late, he said Saturday during a rally in Wilmington, North Carolina. Voting has already started. Unquote. Trump has claimed he won the debate against Harris, though most polls show the vice president as the victor. Harris has been saying on the campaign trail that her standoff with Trump was fun and that he owed it to the public to face her on stage again. Okay, wait, now Harris claims that Trump owes it to the public to face her on stage again? You know, we can all agree that Trump's mouth gets him into trouble often. But the more Harris keeps talking, the more you see how narcissistic and selfish she is. Owes it to the public to face you on stage again? If you put this in context, Harris is basically saying I want more attention and praise from the debate at the expense of Trump in the debate. I'll word it even better so you can truly grasp it. Harris is saying Trump owes the public another debate for my benefit, not the public's. She doesn't care about the public, which are American citizens. She only cares about the national coverage that will be rigged in her favor. That's why she called it, quote, fun. It's not fun. Americans are suffering. There are wars going on. And Harris, once again, living in her bubble, is only concerned about being praised for a debate. And then the audacity to claim Trump owes the public. Negative. You are the candidate that owes the public. Just fucking basic messages. I mean, this is insanity. A candidate ducks and dodges questions about her plans and policies, yet doesn't take the responsibility of owing the public that message. She keeps blabbering out this type of rhetoric, and it keeps magnifying how self-centered she is. Trump may be self-centered, but I think most of that has gone away over the years. He's not the same billionaire celebrity. Most of that narcissism has vanished. He's not the same candidate from 2016, neither. Obviously, as he's gotten older, and more importantly, Having two assassination attempts on your life will pull most of that narcissism out of you pretty quick. And I think the reason the Harris campaign and Democrats want the debates on left-wing media is because they want to agitate Trump, making him appear as the same candidate from 2016, which he isn't. And I think people are seeing this, that the real egomaniac is Kamala Harris, or she has become an egomaniac with the puppet masters behind her molding this persona into her character. Nevertheless, she's responsible for her own words and actions. Let's continue. Quote, it would be unprecedented in modern history for there to just be one general election debate. O'Malley Dillon said, debates offer a unique chance for voters to see the candidates side by side and take stock of their competing visions for America. Unquote. 
Would it be a crazy conspiracy theory to suggest that Jen O'Malley is smoking crack cocaine? She claims it's unprecedented to have only one general election debate. How about having the first presidential debate three months prior, which has never happened in U.S. politics? How about a president deciding not to run for re-election, nominates his vice president in Harris to take his place? Yet this vice president was treated as the Democratic presidential nominee without an official endorsement and confirmation from Democratic convention, which occurred months later. How about a nominee not receiving any votes from those very Americans, no primaries to confirm her nomination, and somehow she's officially the Democratic nominee? Or how about the excuse Democrats gave, claiming that since old Joe wasn't officially the Democratic nominee at the time of this sham, it was not a violation of the Democratic process of Harris, replacing him as the nominee. Oh, really? If he wasn't officially the Democratic nominee, then how can he fucking have a presidential debate against Trump then? I'll say that one more time. If old Joe wasn't officially the Democratic nominee, then how can he participate in a presidential, yes, presidential, you know, the president of the United States? How the hell can he participate in a presidential debate against the Republican nominee and Donald Trump? So if we apply this claim by Democrats in regards to old Joe to that presidential debate, we can also claim that the presidential debate itself wasn't an official debate then, right? So what does that give us? It gives us a rigged up, tangled up web of fuckery that the Democrats orchestrated to slither in the current presidential nominee in Kamala Harris, who without a doubt didn't deserve the nomination, nor did she even deserve the nomination for her current role as vice president. The Democrats have been gaslighting the hell out of a fictional group of people, meaning nobody believes Harris is qualified. But people will pretend she is, just to appeal to the virtue signaling, social justice warrior brigade, gender and racial, quote, compassions, and all the other liberal sensitivities that have people walking on eggshell trying not to tell it like it is. Don't want to hurt the princess's feelings, you know. These are just the objective facts. In the so-called town hall with Oprah, which was basically a talk show format, like the old days, with a bunch of wacky liberal Hollyweird celebrities foaming at the mouth over Harris. Even in this heavily favored setting, Kamala Harris still struggled to relay basic, fundamental policy messages to Oprah and her audience. And she walked away from that town hall unchallenged. No policies proposed to the American people, which they were owed. Yes, they were owed that. But did Harris take that opportunity to empower the American people with her, quote, new way forward, did she take that opportunity to give details about a plan to fix the economy she helped destroy? If you're not qualified, you have no general concept of economics. How the hell can you articulate anything remotely fundamental about fixing an economy? You can't. So we're asking the wrong questions about Kamala Harris in regards to policies. Instead of asking how will Harris fix the economy, bring down inflation, prevent wars and such, we should be asking, is this real life? Because clearly this person is not the Democratic candidate for president. She's an illusion. And peel back that onion, the same applied with old Joe. He was an illusion. As my colleagues mentioned in the previous episode, the progressives collectively were, and currently, the president and vice president of the United States. I would even suggest Kamala Harris doesn't have an actual political view on anything firmly. That's why her diction sounds so empty. Because she doesn't have a political view she is an empty vessel, but a sponge, absorbing all of the political ideals from those behind her and struggling to comprehend and discern those ideals as it relates to policy and how it affects the country and also on a global scale. Basically, she's high school principal who has been thrown into position of power on a national and global level. As a result, complete DDDI disaster. I mean, look what's happening in Congress. You have radical progressives like Rashida Tlaib, running around making a mockery of being Congress members. They don't take the job seriously because they're anti-American. Or let me rephrase that, their vision of America is anti-white population. That's why there isn't a white member of the squad. They are all people of color. If it was about policies and a progressive, comprehensive ideology for America, surely a white member should exist, right? No whites allowed. Sounds familiar? These socialists and even communists control the Democratic Party not Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. They're loud and obnoxious, agitating, unwilling to compromise. Heck, they even bucked Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. 
bad grandkids who are ungrateful, entitled, undeserving of their positions, just ratcheting up Congress with their radical ideals. Ayanna Presley is running around with a Mrs. Clean, claiming she has alopecia. Negative. She's just another attention-seeking radical who is once again ratcheting up Congress with these wacky antics. Just so happens she announced it in January 2020. Yeah, good job in contributing to distracting from the bogus election. And ever since these squad members invaded Congress, there has been a gradual deterioration of the integrity in Congress and also the integrity of American values abroad. So if we want to blame someone for the current disaster known as Kamala Harris, it would fall at the feet of the progressives putting the battery in her back. What do you guys think? Does this assessment seem likely? I think so. But let's shift gears a bit, because there's another recent bomb dropped. Speaking of illusions, we often speak about how racism is an illusion, right? Well, apparently Nancy Mace has the receipts. I'll let my colleagues take it from here. Thanks. Great job, by the way. Nancy Mace has been quite outspoken in Congress, calling out former Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle, in which she told her, quote, You're full of shit, unquote. Then, of course, her appearance on CNN, which was basically a debate about how to pronounce Kamala Harris's name. Now it became a mudslinging fest, where the left basically alluded to her being racist or displaying the same so-called dismissive tone of a racist in regards to people of color. The person that pushed that in the debate was, of course, Japanese-speaking Michael Eric Dyson. Well, he may want to figure out how he's going to get out of the recent jam. Nancy Mace has put him in. In a recent congressional hearing, Mace called out Dyson for basically being a phony race beta who apparently found her to be quite the looker. In that hearing, Mace presented a text conversation between the two where Dyson apparently flirted with her after that CNN panel debate. Now, as we see from this screenshot of the hearing, there appears to be her own screenshot of the text messages between the two, displaying a photo they took together after the debate. Now, we won't just accept that as evidence, we dig a bit deeper. Now, here is the actual photo taken. That is, in fact, Dyson to the left and Mace to the right after the debate. And we know it's after the debate because both are wearing the same outfits from the debate as seen here. Now, one would say, well, it doesn't mean Dyson can't be courteous and show respect after the debate, right? Well, in that conversation, Dyson apparently told Mace that quote, let's keep what happened at the debate on the hush, unquote. Meaning, Dyson alluding to Mace being racist was merely for the show, and he doesn't feel that way. Now, when I say alluding to being racist, this is how that segment of the debate went, if you recall. Mace mispronounced Harris's name several times. The panel corrected her. She then stated in a rebellious manner, quote, I'll pronounce her name any way I want, unquote. Dyson then felt, I pretended to feel that that was disrespectful and went on to associate racism into that equation. Mace then responded in saying, quote, so now you're calling me a racist, unquote. Dyson responded, paraphrasing because he blabbers so much, he responded in saying that he wasn't calling her racist, but you don't have to intend racism to accomplish racism, unquote. Now this is still calling Mace racist, just in an unintentional manner. And putting it into more context, Dyson is also suggesting that Mace accomplished the racism by mispronouncing the name. You see, this is the slick talk of Dyson. He knows how to word his attacks, where there is a claim of Mace being a racist, but at the same time is claiming her rhetoric is more so an agency of racism, not her specifically. In other words, a bunch of pseudo-intellectual blabbering. In what dynamic is someone not a racist, but they accomplish racism? Keep in mind, this is on national television, on a network that is obsessed with racism, so obviously Mace was depicted as another example of a Republican racist to their viewers. But behind closed doors, Dyson apologized for this and apparently flirted with her. She claims in that hearing that Dyson stated, quote, they look good together, referring to the photo taken after the debate, sent her kissing emojis, and also called her gorgeous, unquote. Now, if this is true, his entire political career is a sham. Well, we know that, but his rhetoric has been exposed as part of a job not what he actually believes, for all the nation to see. Dyson responded, denying the allegations and, well, called her a bigot. So, uh, he went right back into character of race baiting, instead of just accepting that he likes her huge knockers, and he has the hots for her. The reason he went into damage, damage control, control is because it actually justifies the claims that CNN is fake news and that discredits the rhetoric about racism, 
which also questions if racism is real, you see. So of course he has to deny it, to not only protect his image, protect the circus known as CNN, and ultimately protect the truth about racism. But Nancy Mace provided the receipts, and unless Dyson can back up his denial with his own receipts, the facts are on her side. The point here is that racism is an illusion, of course it's carried out, but it's carried out to justify the illusion you understand. Hopefully you do, but Nancy Mace exposing Eric Dyson for asking her out to dinner basically proves that his ideology is nothing more than a financial investment. Think about the optics of this situation as well. Eric Dyson has made a name for himself rambling about racism in America, condemning the Republican Party, and lo and behold, he's secretly messaging a Republican white woman, hoping he could, quote, enlighten, enlighten her, her to, the to the mechanism of the impurities of collectivism and barbaric, and barbaric imperialism. imperialism. Open, her Open her eyes to the systemic sinister, sinister ways of neoconservatism, neo which parrots the depths of diabolical ideology of an historical, historical civilization of hateful megalomaniacs, who have enslaved our people for their globalist dominance, rooted in extreme self-loathing and manic depressive behavior, which is rooted in not comprehending the vast creation, a universal design that created all human as equals. Under the skies of prosperity and hope translation, Dyson wants to have sex with that Republican white woman. She's a bit feisty, not afraid to speak her mind, and in that hearing she decided to reveal the private messages between the two, to actually expose Dyson was simply playing a role, a role that he secretly apologized for and wanted Mace to keep between them. He would have did better just keeping his distance and not mentioning that, because he literally exposed his entire career with those messages. But uh, he wasn't thinking with the brain in his skull, if you catch my drift. But what do you guys think? Do they look good together? Surely Dyson wouldn't want to hook up with a racist Republican, right? This is the chaos sector.